Okay, so first order of business, guys. We're gonna, we throw name sticks down. And we're gonna ask you to use one and give us a, some, some idea of a target. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be the first basket right here for now. And what we're gonna learn, a couple, couple different things. You've got an educator and a smart ball. When you blow up your smart ball, there's a little valve right there. If you bite on this enough, If you bite on that valve, you can get air through there. It's going to turn blue. So, silly little inflatable ball, it's going to go between your forms. We'll show you that in a moment. But a critical thing you guys have to understand is this. The rhythm of hinging and unhinging. Can we agree that if I had a hammerhead on here and I had a stake, that I could rhythmically go I could use momentum and rhythm, and I could add a little, a little energy and whack that thing into the ground. Agreed? Okay. So the up and down motions of golf. This golf club, the, the hand's job in golf is this, up and downs. Okay, the body's job in golf are right and lefts. So you're going to learn how to create a nice rhythmic event that lets your kind of hands go up and down while your body helps you create the right and lefts for you to thump little shots. Now, when you put this guy on here, we're gonna show you how to use this in its most basic form. And then if you want to, you can watch all the videos on my website. There's a bunch of drills. We may show you one or two based on your needs. We're gonna show you this one for sure, okay? How to have a lead arm, a left arm, kind of work in a flying wedge. A flying wedge is an old nerd uh, thing from a guy named Ben Doyle out of the golf machine. So this is an up and down, and this is an up and down with rhythmic rotation. So I'm not trying to stand here and make the club go right and left. What's helping me go right and left? Some rhythm in the ground and rotation of my body. And Wendell and I have worked on this a lot. And so hopefully this is like the moment where he's gotten better. Okay, and Marty, you've gotten better. Where's Marty? Marty's gotten better. But I want you guys to have this like, like wow, okay, cool. I'm on to the next thing. A breakthrough in really playing good golf. What's your score? What do you suit now? 80s? Low 80s, yeah. That's awesome. So for you to crack 80 would be amazing, wouldn't it? Marty, where are you at? Okay, so physically you're very capable to go south of that and crack 80, okay? So guys, we're gonna do this little exercise and you're not gonna hit these good. I'm gonna miss these. So this is a left arm flying wedge, a lead arm flying wedge, where I made a swing to a finishing form and I'm done, okay? And I missed and that's okay. And so we'll put another ball up Maybe we put it on a tee, guys, to make it a little easier. And, and, and you'll see some of the nuances of this. We're gonna take this white gizmo, and if, 12, if the grooves are at 12 o'clock, the gizmo is gonna be over here at one o'clock. And a really simple way to do this is put it on sort of to where it's on. It can hold the club up, but you can kind of rotate it from 12 o'clock over to about one o'clock, and then tighten that down, give it a good crank so it doesn't move around. And then we're trying to feel the rhythm of hinging and letting this body help us with this rhythmic unhinging and rolling to where we can hopefully hit a crispy shot here to a finishing form. So I just missed two in a row and I've done a lot of this, guys. So then what can you expect? You can expect to miss two. And that's absolutely cool. Because I know if I put this in, I would say to myself, and I'll show you in a second, there's a goodie. Wendell asked me, Marty, show me a good, show me how to practice. And I'm gonna say, okay, this is how you practice. Set a timer on your phone for 15 minutes. A little blink in time where all you do is do one thing. You don't go darting around thinking of a million things. So you go to your phone and you type in 15 minutes of little 40 yard hinging, unhinging and rotating left arm flying wet shots. 15 minutes. Maybe in that 15 minutes you get 25 shots in doing that. Does that sound like something you can handle? I think so. If you put a timer on it and you know there's an ending that isn't too far away, you'll do it. I always tell my kids when they don't want to do something, I say, this is a two minute job, let's go. I.e. put the dishes away. It's not put the dishes away, feels like pain. But if you do it by a time chunk, it's not that painful. They know it's only two minutes, six minutes, whatever. 
If you know that this is a 15 minute practice event or a 10 minute practice event of you learning how to have some, creating some angle, potential rhythm for power, and how that angle unhinges itself while you let that have a bottom into a finishing form. You guys tracking what I'm talking about here? Perfect. Now the next one, guys, is this one. And if you watch any tour event on a Sunday, you're gonna see somebody warming up with this thing, many, many guys. So we're gonna do left arm flying wedges with the educator first. And we'll check a box to see how y'all do. Okay, because a lot of it, you'll only, only be able to do that, guys, if you can do this. If you can lever a golf club into your left hand properly so that the grip is more across your hand than along your hand. Because if you don't lever it into your left hand properly, guess what you don't have the ability to do? Create what you need for this unhinging and rhythm. Okay, and that's where I'm teasing you, Ed. Okay, because golf's tricky because this club comes to us on this odd angle and then we kind of grip it for comfort rather than function and we've just killed a number of degrees of opportunity for us to have some energy. You see where I'm going with that? Notice if, if I put it in the palm like this and I hinge this wrist up, what does that do to the club face? If I even try to hinge the club, there's your open face. So Dead. We, we see a lot of bad grips and if, and if, if they start to load it this way, it's just going to open the face up. So that's why getting this this left wrist more bent back at the start. You'll see players are kind of behind the ball, like Adam Scott kind of gets it in his left hand like this, and then he swivels it this way. So this wrist is more extended. So as I hinge that up, you see how the face is staying pretty square there? Compared to in the palm and up like that. Okay, now there are players that play with, with like weaker grips and more in the palm, but they got to work their wrist a lot differently to hit some, somewhat and, of a and, it, and if you've heard of those players, it's because they got good when they were really little, despite their coach. Right. Okay, not because of their coach, despite their coach. All right, so then the next little thing, guys, is learning how to transport that rhythm. So if I put this ball between my forearms and I say, how do I move that golf ball? I mean, this smart ball. I mean, I could do a little bit with my arms, but if I rhythmically now can do this with my body, I'm doing a couple good things. The more I manage my arms, the more I manage my wrists. If my elbows separate a whole bunch, look what my wrists have to do, guys. And so there's another chaotic element we don't want to deal with. Why is golf hard, fellas? Because it's an athletic event that's one second to 1.2 seconds separated by time. The time's usually five minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, four minutes, six minutes. Meaning if we go tee off at eight o'clock, when do we hit our next shot? 8.06. And then we go maybe by the green, hit a chip at 8.10. We two putt, we move to the next hole after 12 minutes. Then we go to the tee, maybe it's a par three, we don't even hit a driver. Maybe we don't hit our next driver until 25 minutes after we teed off. So you see on a range we get a rhythm and we have this like feel, oh we just missed, I got a feel, okay I can change that. And then 25, 30 seconds later we hit another ball. On the course we don't get the benefit of doing that, do we? So we've got to have a deep understanding of how to apply rhythm in a variety of situations. One of you guys put down slopey lies. Was who wrote down slopey lies? Short, somebody, somebody wrote, I would I got it here some, but maybe that's, maybe I'm living in the past golf schools. But think about it too, we practice on this flat thing, and then we go to some funky hill, and then we've got to be able to get the rhythm of that golf club on that ball nicely on a funky slope. So, you, so what is this all boiling down to, guys? It's boiling down to having amazing hands, so we can forget about the damn things. Anybody type? Anybody type here? Like properly? And do you think about it much? Of course you don't, right? Any musicians here that learn how to play a little something? There you go, do you think about it much? Not after you learn it, right? You kind of figure it out and you get the, you get the rhythm and the, like there's like a cadence of where the hands go and you kind of get it and then you don't have to think about it. We want to train in the hard thoughts now so it eventually becomes automatic. But it's not automatic when you learn it, it stinks. So we're all here to suffer together. Trust me, it's great, suffer, suck, miss. Who cares? Let's do it nicely. Let's struggle, learn a little rhythm, how we transport ourselves. So this ball, just to kind of get on this a little, you adjust it, it'll fit super tall guys. Guys, put the fixed loop. See how I can pull on this and it won't, there's a fixed loop. Put the fixed loop over your neck, then the other side slides and adjusts. People put their head through here, you can choke yourself to death, okay? And the tree's right there, you could hang yourself actually. So. 
let's put our good hand, put this on here, and then we're going to learn how to transport the rhythm of this. And you don't even have to hit hard shots, like rhythmic little shots where the ball gets in the way. And then when are we done, guys? Now. We're not going to go tomahawk chop and get another ball, okay? So those are our two little challenges right now. Are we up for it? Everybody good? You got any questions about this left arm one? I'm going to take, Jimmy, I'm going to start that four. You start this four. Okay. Let's get these gizmos on, say, a pitching a question. Yeah, please. Yes. Yeah, perfect. You know what I'll tell you what? Nothing goes farther than the, these baskets. Yeah. You know what I mean? So rhythmically, what would it take to kind of go to hit one to the basket? Doesn't take much. Right. Yeah, and you know, you know what you're going to find, guys? You're going to see a lot of this. You're going to see a lot of dragging arms up this way rather than the speed of this going from in front of us and down. See how this is uncocking into the ground, touching, touching the ground into a wee divot? We want that. And that wee divot's going to be in the correct place because we transport ourselves to the correct place. And, and so I'm not going to get too much into all the nitty gritty. That'll be for more of like personal how we relate to you when we make you a little video on this. Some of you are going to suck at it because you're going to be back here every one of these. And then we're going to say, hey, find some rhythm in these feet, guys. Learn how to kind of press the grass. How do we add that into a backswing? And then when you watch Jim, will hit a few long drives for us when he's up for it. And it, we used to tee him off back there behind those stacks of wood, seriously. So he didn't kill those people down there because he could kill them all right now with a two iron. Okay, and, and you watch the rhythm he develops as he sets into a driver and what helps him create a backswing. And we're going to do that on a much, much tinier level. Now you'll start to see it, the whole process of this, guys. Watch my feet as I chip it to the green basket, okay? Watch my feet and watch my head. Did I, did I back up, guys? Was there any backing up? No, if you watch it again, you're going to see something interesting. Some, you're going to see me see this little pressure forward with rotation. That's why it's a crispy touch where the ball's hit and there's a micro divot on these little pitch shots. Okay, where most people have this wide stance and kind of hang back and try to help it. We're not going to do that. We're going to learn how to feel how our body transports the club which ways, guys? Right and left. And now the hands help the ups and downs. And then when you blend all that, you know, you get this combination of things that looks like golf. Okay, any questions? So I'm going to go turn this camera off, and here's what happens. When I go turn this off, one of you says, hey, Marty, you got a little question. So if you got that, if you have that little question right now, do you have it? Nobody? You sure? I'm going to go turn it off. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> 